So uh, I'm going to show you a picture, everybody. Uh, and you have two tasks. Well, three. The first is to say when the picture was taken, where the picture was taken, and who is the teacher in the picture. Here we go. Oh, no. Uh, I'm back we go. We're going to, I'm very sorry about this, everybody. It's, uh, I, I've done something uh, silly, so I'm just going to do that uh, um, and see if that helps. Um, don't go away. Please don't go away because that would be awful. Um, right, let's try again. Um, here's the picture. And what you have to do is to say uh, when the picture was taken, where it was taken, uh, and who uh, uh, who you can see in the picture. Now I can't see the um, the 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 chat box or anything uh, on my screen for some reason. Uh, I'll worry about that later. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I can. Uh, um, hello. I can see people coming in. Look, there are lots of people: Istanbul, Argentina, Ukraine, Mexico City, Canada, France. Uh, it was taken in the seventies. 1970s, 1980s, 1970s. Uh, um, well, uh, I'll tell you that it was taken, the photo was taken in, um, oh look, in Romania. Um, anyway, that photograph was taken in 1976, to be precise. Uh, the photograph was taken in 1976, and the teacher is, of course, me, uh, uh, a very much younger version of me. Um, and um, it's taken in a place called uh, Bournemouth, which is in, on the south coast of England, at a language school. Uh, and I've got a quest another question for you about this picture. Uh, and the question goes like this. Who thinks that they're the most important thing in this photo? Uh, and, and I think it's fairly obvious that, that um, the teacher, that's me, seems to think they're the most uh, the most important person in this photo in my defense uh, uh, although i can't really remember anything about it in my defense um the students were working on their own as you can see um uh, and i didn't have anything to do um so and the camera was much closer to me so i was posing rather disgustingly um but 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 i guess the question really is is um, who is uh, the most important person in the in the picture? And of course, it's them uh, in that picture you just saw. Um, let's see if I can get it back. Um, ah, um, oh, um, in that picture you can get. I, I remember that the girl um, nearest us with a with a piece of paper held up. Her name is Elizabeth. She's from Germany. Uh, the girl uh, on the table there is from Switzerland. The boys from Italy. Um, because obviously uh, the most important person, the most important thing in that photograph is not the teacher at all, it's the students. Um, they're the ones doing the work, they're the ones who, who matter. And uh, I, could, I could be the best teacher in the world, I'm not, but I could be the best teacher in the world. But if they're not learning, then there's no point to me at all. Um, so, because so often we talk about uh, English language teaching, uh, and we train to be English language teachers, but our real topic, uh, our real occupation is, is really all about this. It's about English language learning. Uh, because if the students aren't learning, uh, then nothing's happening. Um, and, and I could be doing what I'm doing now, which is I'm teaching, uh, but I can't hear or see what's going on. So I can't tell. Well, if you're in inverted commas learning, this obviously isn't a language class, but uh, the whole point of everything we do is for the students to be able uh, to be learning at the same time. Um, uh, I can see lots of people coming in. Um, uh, oh, dear. Uh, I heard someone saying that the audio is, is not good. Um, I hope that's not true. But there's nothing I can do about it at this end. I've got all my settings, I think, working well. Um, uh, oh, good, but, but Erica Chavez says it's all right. 
Phew. Right, here we go. This is about English language learning. It's not really about English language teaching at all. So, and in order for English language learning to take place, and you may have heard me talk about this before, the students need to be involved in deep processing. Deep processing. Uh, um, okay, uh, thanks, Lucy. Uh, th they need to be involved in deep processing. Um, uh, what is deep processing? Well, here's a, a book uh, from 2021 by Stephen M. Coslin, and it's rather a, a nice title. You can see it says uh, Active Learning Online, uh, Five Principles That Make Online Courses Come Alive. It's published by Elinia Press in, in 2021. And he's a psychology teacher. Uh, and at the beginning of every semester, his students all come to the lecture theatre and he puts them in pairs. Uh, and he says, in each pair, one of you is A and the other is B. And he gives each student uh, a piece of paper with these words on them. And he says, student A, I want you to read the, this list of words uh, and I want you to decide which words are taller at the beginning than they are at the end. Which words are taller at the beginning than they are at the end. Uh, and student B, is told, uh, look at these words, and I want you to tell me which one is more, which one describes something that is alive. And they look at this, and about 45 seconds later, he says, right, turn your pieces of paper upside down, and now uh, let's see how many words you can remain uh, remember. And of course, what happens is that the student, uh, what do you think? Do you think it's student? A or student B who remembers more words, because there's an absolute difference. Remember, student A, uh, just I have to look at uh, um, whether the word is bigger at the beginning than the end, and student B have to decide whether the words mean something uh, uh, which is alive. And, and I think most people are coming up with the, uh, I was gonna say the obvious answer, but I don't mean, I don't mean to say it's so obvious. Uh, what I mean to say is the whole point is, uh, that if you try and decide whether a word is describes something that's alive, it's not just a kind of shallow exercise. It's not just a kind of, oh, the F is taller than the G in frog and the H is taller than the P because it's got a sort of serif or whatever you call it. Of course, it's, it's, um, it's B. It's the alive ones. So what are we talking about? Well, uh, um, in... Deep processing is the obviously the opposite of shallow processing. Deep water, deep water, shallow water. Um, and what does deep processing mean? It means that language is processed for, for meaning, uh, for context, uh, and emotion. Uh, and I think that's the, the real... Well, it's all important there. Context and emotion are incredibly important. The whole point about deep processing is that students are both cognitively and emotionally fully engaged. Cognitively, because we want their brains hooked in to what's going on, uh, and emotionally, because unless they invest some feeling in it, some, some heart, if you like, in it, um, it's unlikely that the learning is gonna last for too long. Whereas, uh, whereas, um, shallow processing is language where you just process it for its properties, grammar, pronunciation, spelling, that kind of thing. That's important. And some people get very excited about that. But it doesn't have the same kind of depth. It doesn't have the same kind of oomph, the same kind of emotional power, uh, the, sa the same kind of brain and heart uh, engagement uh, that, that we're looking for. So... If we want students to be learners, we need to, they need to be involved in deep processing. Um, which is better for learning? I, I think it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the one on the left is, is much better. Moldova, good heaven, we don't get too many people from Moldova, that, that's lovely. Um, shallow, as Sylvia says, is less memorable. Look, um, we've got to be careful about this because of course, some people really enjoy the kind of almost, uh, intellectual puzzle of trying to work out how grammar works and how 
how what spelling is all about uh, and, and uh, um, so on. India, hello, India, uh, and all that kind of thing. But in the end, that emotional and cognitive heft, that power is what really, really matters. Um, now, uh, I'm a teacher uh, and a teacher trainer, but I also write materials. Uh, and this is where it gets complicated, uh, because if I believe that, um, and there's Mark from Mexico, if I believe uh, 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 in what I've just said about deep processing, what are we talking about? How do I reflect that uh, in materials? Uh, well, uh, clearly, uh, I'm interested in the methodology I use. What are, the, what are the sort of methodological procedures and directions? What do we do with the students in the classroom? You know, do we believe they should do this or that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, clearly, if I want students to be involved in deep processing, an absolute key feature will be the content, because, because this goes without saying, if I tell you about something interesting and fantastic and fabulous, then then um, then you're much more likely to be emotionally engaged than if I tell you about something which is really boring uh, uh, and not involving at all. Um, and, and then, of course, the issue is, uh, if I've got the right content and, and I'm plugged into the methodology I want to use, what activities are most likely to stimulate uh, this deep processing that, that I am suggesting is absolutely vital if you want students to really learn, 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 learn. Oh, there's someone from Constanta. Uh, um, hello, uh, Dorinum. Uh, um, uh, then I need a, a really nice blend of content and activities to, to, uh, to to get my students really engaged. And so we're gonna move on to some examples soon. Uh, so the next thing is, yes, but I can talk about that. And if you and me, if we're talking face to face, we can discuss it and I can explain what I mean and so on and so forth. But what happens if I'm writing materials uh, and you might want to use them uh, uh, but yet you and me, we're never going to meet. And by the way, when I say me, uh, I should really clarify, I'm talking about me. And in the case of, of uh, 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 New American Jetstream, which is what I'm going to show you examples of right now, I don't really mean me, Jeremy. I mean me, Jeremy and Jane Ravel and all the other writers from the team who, who've, who, who've uh, contributed to this body of materials. So I'm going to try and change my pronouns now and say, how, how do we make it clear uh, to you who we've never met? Imagine, I, I, hope, I hope very much there are people here who I've met. I can't read the chat box quick enough to, uh, to, to see what's going on. Um, how do I communicate to you what the methodology is? Uh, and, and what, if you like, our methodological values are, and what our methodological um, beliefs are about how students learn best using deep processing. Right, so here goes. Well, in, in the materials uh, uh, that, that uh, I'm focused on today, there are a number of labels which are an, a, 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 which attempt to say to you, but not just you, I mean, all the students who are using these materials, they attempt to say something about what we believe. And here are some of the labels I'm talking about. Um, some activities, some content, some pages start with the one on the top left. It says, you first. Now th this for, for us, for, for all of us who've worked on this uh, 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 Jetstream course, this for us is absolutely fundamental to just about everything we do. 
What does it mean? It means that before you ask students to read a text, for example, about something, the students need to be there. Well, they are there, they're in front of you if you're teaching face to face, hopefully when there is no lockdowns around. Uh, they are there, but I don't mean there, I mean there, here, in the room, and I don't mean the, their bodies are in the room, I mean their hearts and their souls and their, and their brains are, yes, exactly, Rebecca, I've just seen that pop up, really present, really present, not just present, present, but really present. And so the whole point of, 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 uh, of, of, of saying you first is to say, before I do anything, you students, you come first. And my role is to get you really present. So that's what Rebecca said, really present uh, um, in the room. And here's your brain buzzing away. And here's your heart beating away. And then the next thing, uh, the next label you'll see there is called, uh, yes, and somebody, I saw someone say in, involved. Yes, exactly. Involved is very much what I'm talking about. Uh, the next thing, uh, uh, label you'll see there, says your response. Uh, because if, for example, you, are, you have just read a reading text, it's quite possible that the teacher will say to you, dear student, all right, look at the verbs in the, in, in the text. How many examples can you find of the past tense? Well, that's all right, nothing wrong with that. And indeed we do do that kind of thing. But actually a much more important question, if I want you to be processing deeply is to say, you have uh, uh, just read the text, What's your emotional response to it? How do you feel about it? What do you think? Do you agree with it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What, what do you think? What do you feel? Because this is all about you. We've given you some content. How do you feel about it? And, and the whole point uh, um, of that is, is what I already said. Because the moment I say, how do you feel about this? It's all about you and you are really present and everything that's happening in this class is all about you. So those two, uh, those two labels, if you like, are like huge big signposts, which we hope will explain how we feel about what's going on in the materials we're offering. Uh, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm trying to do a sort of a blinking lights. So I don't know whether you can see me. These are kind of lights going flash, 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 saying um, uh, you matter more than anybody else in this room. Um, and here's another label, your story. And your story is doing exactly the same thing. It's saying if you have language <coughs> to use, use it to tell your story, not my story, not the story in the materials, what's your story? And so you'll frequently find, if you, if you leaf through these materials, you'll frequently find, uh, it says, that it will say, your story. So what about you? What's your story? And the moment that the students start to tell their story, yeah, there they are, they're present in the room. It's, it, and they're using their hearts and their minds uh, to, to, to use the language for them. Uh, not for me, not for the teacher, not for the exam, not for anything, but for them. Um, good. And then here's another label, uh, memory. Well, memory is absolutely critical in, in, in language learning, because uh, unless you can remember what, what's just been happening, you're never going to uh, process, uh, you're never going to progress. Uh, in, in, in the learning of a language. So uh, memory is an absolutely classic uh, um, uh, uh, sort of label, sign, symbol, flag, because what it says is you've just done something or you've read a text or you've, list you've listened to something. Uh, okay, what do you remember about it? And, and we think that the act of trying to remember has two really uh, profound effects. The first is uh, that the students have to uh, process 
what they've just been involved in. And secondly, if they make the effort uh, of, of, of so I've just seen some uh, Sammy has just talked about full engagement, and I like I like that I like that idea of full engagement. Um, uh, if you try to remember what's been going on, two processes. Number one, you're processing what you've come across, which also means processing the language and the content and what's been going on and so on and so forth. But you're also making an effort to do that processing, and that effort, we believe. Uh, is 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 a kind of uh, kind of physiological process uh, which will contribute to you remembering uh, the language uh, uh, and the content that was involved. If you look at the bottom label uh, uh, there, um, yeah, I, somebody who's that Alejandra? She's talking about noticing. I, I'm yeah, I like that. That's good. That's good. Um, if, if you look at but. Uh, Fernanda from, from Brazil, she says, uh, humans can't remember everything. You're absolutely right, Fernanda. By the way, I don't want to get sidetracked, but what Fernanda just put in the chat, she's absolutely right. What teachers do, what materials do, is we offer students a chance to remember. What we cannot do is guarantee they'll remember exactly what we uh, want them to remember, because that's not how it works. If you remember the 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 Everything is about the students being present in the room and each student is an individual and they will do what they want with what's, what, 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 uh, what, um, uh, they will do with it what they do with it, each individual, and it may be different. But the, but, but the least we can do, and this would be my answer to Fernanda, the least we can do is, is, is try and get them to remember and, and, and go through those processes I was talking about. Um, and then the last, uh, oh yes, uh, and then we've got the takeaway, uh, and I saw someone, but it's gone, disappeared up the top. Um, uh, takeaway, um, I, I think one of, the, one of the things we do, and you'll see an example of this in a minute, one of the things we do is to say to students, well, here you are, here's a piece of text, here's a piece of, of, of something or other, um, which, which sort of two or three words or phrases would you most like to take away with you and put in your suitcase? Um, uh, and that sounds a bit crazy. Uh, it is crazy. Um, well, we're crazy, but, but, but it's got a, a, a sort of philosophical point. It is this. You, students sitting on over there, and you, students sitting over there, you are two different people. And I can't insist that you're going to take away the same things. But what you must, what I want you to do is to take away uh, the language that you want to learn, the language you want to make your own. Because this, remember what we're talking about, this is all about you, it's not about me. I want you to take away uh, what you want of this language. Anything you take away will be good uh, because it's the language we've just been looking at it looking at. Um, we call it suitcase language as well, hence that little graphic. Uh, put it in your suitcase and take it away. And, and there's one last uh, uh, label there, everybody up. Um, in all the things that happen in the classroom, uh, every now and then students kind of sit there. Uh, it happens, it's, it's what happens. But if you are in a physical classroom as opposed to being on Zoom, but even on Zoom, uh, every now and then, but this is especially for a physical classroom. Um, the idea of getting everybody to stand up and if possible, move into the center of the room and get into little groups uh, and, and, and things. Um, I, 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 Catalina is saying something about the takeaway label is at the end of the day. Yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, I, I think any time you, you do that, that uh, any time you, you have a pause and you say, what do you want to take away? It does exactly what Catalina was just mentioning. Anyway, back to everybody up. Um, everybody up, we, we want to get students up, standing up in the middle of the room, uh, talking to each other and communicating, because when people, when students talk to each other, uh, it, it's very good for, for um, group cohesion. It's very memorable and, and it's good fun and all sorts of other things. Um, uh, uh, so, um, uh, Stella uh, calls it the choice board. I think that's that's uh, her version of takeaway, which I think sounds rather nice. Right. 
Um, uh, I've just seen someone say, uh, Arlene, um, helpful for my dissertation. Well, uh, what more could, could um, a speaker ask for? Um, right, so I've been talking for too long. Well, I'm gonna go on talking for hours, but I've been talking for too long. Let's have a look at some examples of what I mean. Here goes. Um, students, we, we say to them, how many roles do you have in your daily life? Uh, and, and just think about that. And then maybe they can talk in pairs and say, how many roles do you have in a different, a different life? Um, if they're young students, they, they may be students, they may be uh, 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 sports players, they may be brothers or, or cousins or something like that. Or, you know, uh, um, you know most, the, uh, you know, an awful lot of women would say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. Uh, and I'm a mother and I'm a cook and I'm a, all this kind of thing. And, 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 and I might say, well, I'm, I'm a teacher and, and, and I'm a trainer and I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I, I drive the family car, whatever it is. I don't know. Um, uh, oops, that, I, I, that was very much a gender um, stereotyping. But you get the idea. Um, uh, more than 10, someone just said. Uh, it depends on. Yes, of course. It, I mean, yeah. But how many different roles do you personally have in your daily life so that's and 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 uh, and you know and if you talk about that and if you talk about it in pairs here you are uh, it's, it's impossible to replicate on zoom but here you are in the room you're present you're with us we're into the topic right let's go on and here is uh, um here is a picture. Well, there are two pictures, and uh, before anything else happens, you can see uh, a, a lovely, pretty young woman and a bassoon, uh, and then you can see a rather aggressive-looking woman in a boxing glove, and she's looking a bit. Uh, and and then the, the question is: uh, so we say, uh, I want to put you in pairs. Um, someone said, um, a learner in various domains. Yeah. Um, uh, and I love that. What's Stella? That's St it's the same Stella, I think so. Anyway, enough. Um, so, so student A, I want you to read sentences one to six. And student B, I want you to read sentences seven to twelve, starting at twelve. In other words, read backwards. And this is what they get. This is student A. So Hannah Rankin is a professional boxer from Scotland in her early thirties. In 2019, she managed to beat the American Sarah Curran and win the IBO Super Welterweight title, the first Scottish woman ever to have a world title. Wow, the first Scottish woman ever. Uh, she didn't manage to keep the title when she fought uh, Patricia Bergelt in Malta a few months later, though. Um, but hey, she got it. She's always enjoyed sports, but it was when her mother died that boxing became her number one interest. She says she was able to survive the sadness she felt by going to the gym. Well, that's what her father suggested, so she could switch off her emotions for a while. And she trains for a long time for a big fight before her world title win. She couldn't see her fiancé for four weeks. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's what student A reads. Remember, student B is going to read from sentence 12 uh, upwards. So this is what student B reads. As a bassoonist, she, uh, sorry, um, Hannah Rankin is a professional musician in her early 30s. She's from a village in Scotland called Lewis. We're talking about the same woman. Uh, she played the flute as a child, but in her teenage years, she changed to the bassoon. She studied at the Royal Conservatoire of Music in Edinburgh and has a master's degree from the Royal Academy of Music. She plays in orchestras, music, below that plays in a wing quintet. As a bassoonist, she needs to protect her hands and her mouth. And so far, she's managed to escape with just a couple of black eyes. Uh, I'm not terribly interested in boxing, sorry. I'm passionately interested in music, but I think I don't think I know of any other professional musician uh, of that kind of caliber and that kind of uh, uh, standard and level who also is a boxer. Um, and, and that seems to me to be interesting. So by the way, deep processing, we hope that by doing this little exercise and giving students, they probably guess exactly what's going on, but by getting them to, to read in different directions and slightly different information, uh, at least we've made it a little bit cognitively engaging because then when they share the information, they've been through a kind of uh, uh, um, 
uh, uh, process. Uh, um, they've been, they've been, yeah, they've been involved in a kind of cognitive activity to get them to the truth. There you go. So that's Hannah, Hannah Rank. Um, um, and here's a takeaway. Uh, which of the words and phrases in bold would you most like to put in your suitcases and take away with you? So there's a text. We've just got you to do something with the text. I hope it's interesting, um, dear students. Uh, um, I can't guarantee that, but I've tried to make, we have tried to make the, the activity kind of involving uh, and cognitively interesting. And, and even if you're not especially interested in Hannah Rankin and her bassoon playing and her boxing, um, let's let's be let's make this worthwhile worth your while, dear students. Uh, find some words. You know, think of three words or phrases that you would like personally to take away that you want to learn. You want to be able to use, and you know, uh, and you know, uh, uh, Neha, um, uh, is this a book? Yes, it is. This comes from a, 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 a course material for for New American Jetstream, and this is the intermediate level, I believe. Uh, yes. Um, um, uh, the whole point of the takeaway uh, idea is, is that, well, it goes like this. If you, the last time you learned a foreign language, uh, because we're all learning languages all the time, I'm sure you've had the experience that I had when I, I first started to learn Spanish many, many years ago. Um, that some words and phrases just kind of, you just want them. You really want them. You, you, I don't know what it is. They're just sexy or they're exciting or they're lovely or, or something like that. You just want them. And that's, and, and you want them because you are learning them. I was learning Spanish. I wanted these words. Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to do with the students. Okay. Uh, so this, so far, so good. Um, of course, we do have to teach this stuff grammar, um, uh, uh, and, and I say that with a slight sort of groan in my voice, uh, because, uh, um, because um, grammar teaching is, is important, but it's not, I'm much more interested in activities and content and stuff like that on a personal level. Um, but, um, so here we are, uh, but, uh, even with grammar, and this is intermediate, and that's partly uh, to do, uh, um, uh, that, that's part of the reason for this. Um, even with grammar, we've got, could, was able to, or managed to, we don't just teach it, we say, um, use your brains, work it out, think about it, you know? Uh, um, do you remember cognitive engagement, deep processing, don't just repeat, have a think about it. So you have to match the sentences with the definitions and do this kind of thing. Right, enough of that. And here's one more, uh, which I don't think, I can't remember, I don't think we had it on that slide. And, and I want to ask myself, why not? Um, uh, um, I've just seen something I liked. Uh, um, is there, there's nothing wrong with you. I don't, there's nothing wrong with you, Sabah, at all. Uh, you're just, you're just, it sounds to me like you, you sound rather like a human being to me. Of course, we like learning strange and peculiar words, but that makes you, that, that makes you a, 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 a successful language learner and an enthusiastic language learner uh, and, 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 and uh, um, uh, just the kind of language learner I'm interested in. Uh, because if I can tap into that enthusiasm, uh, uh, and, and that kind of slight quirkiness, um, uh, then I'm happy uh, and you're my kind of student. So, but another thing I want, I, we want to say about our students is look, uh, we all live in, in um, uh, a sort of uh, an information age um, where we can find information, not all of it reliable, uh, and you've got to be careful with it, um, uh, but that's a whole other story. Um, but I'd like I'd like my lesson about Hannah Rankin, the bassoon playing boxer or the boxing bassoon player or whatever you like. I'd like it to be more than just a story of some interesting person. Uh, so let, let's make it useful. 
uh, um, uh, um, I've just seen seen something uh, uh, Fernando Savage may be like. Uh, um, Let's see uh, if we can expand that and make it more memorable and give students a kind of, give them a kind of, a, a route out, another path, a, a po- another possible interest for you. Um, and that is um, uh, just go exploring women's boxing. Uh, uh, when did it become an Olympic sport? Because it is. But when? Because uh, it's so many sports, you know, that you all remember the old story of the, the Boston Marathon where the first time a woman took part, they tried to get her off the track because they didn't think it was right for women to run. And that was in my lifetime. Um, so what about women's boxing and the Olympics? When was that? When did they consider that was right? And it's quite interesting. It's not, it's not the most interesting thing in the world for me, but it's quite interesting. Uh, and if you can get students to go having a, a look it's all part of this kind of mindset, this value system, this belief system that we have as teachers and materials writers, that if we can get students uh, to sort of, I don't want to exaggerate, make their own destiny uh, as learners, well, that's a really good idea. Right, what have we got here? Um, well, uh, this is uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, pages. Um, it, it's about music, and and uh, I, if I wasn't a language teacher, I, I, I'd, I'd be a professional musician. But that's a whole other story. Um, uh, but uh, so I love music. Um, but um, uh, this is a page in which you, uh, you get to see uh, uh, and and hear about lots of um, uh, different musicians from around the world. Um, uh, you, you'll see, by the way, there's a, there's a you first there at the top of that page. Are you a musical person? Would you like to be? Why? Why not? Anyway, do you remember I mentioned everybody up? Well, there's no point in me getting you to, uh, uh, to talk about music and saying, isn't music interesting? And they, all your students are sitting at the table saying, yes, it is. Hmm. But actually, you want to get students up to talk about it. Uh, um, uh, and And... And so here they go. You get everybody up. This has never, never, uh, <laughs> am I singing a song for you today? I don't think so. Um, uh, the, the, I've done that before on Zoom. It's enough. That's probably enough. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, I'm going to get everybody up. Uh, this has never failed me. I don't know what it is about this particular topic, but it ne- never seems to fail with students. So get students in little groups of five or six. It's important it's not pair work. Because pair work is it, pair work is kind of restricted. Uh, um, I want students in groups because there's always someone, and there are listeners and and and, and engagement and and uh, and as I said, bonding and and togetherness. And it makes the lesson instantly becomes the group's lesson, the students' lesson, not the teachers' lesson. Um, and you just get people in the group to say, uh, uh, "Is anyone?" Uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, but does anyone play anything? When do you practice? How did you start? Whatever. Um, but of course, in any group of five or six people, you may have five or six people who don't play any musical instruments. Why should they? Uh, just because I happen to think it's it's the most important thing in the whole wide world doesn't mean they should. Um, I'm, I'm joking. Um, and But everybody, if I were to ask any single one of you, if you don't play a musical instrument, if you did play a musical instrument, what musical instrument would you like to play? You know, uh, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's just it's just it's it's a no brainer. Most people um, have got an answer to that question, and because they're all standing in the middle and talking to each other, and the classroom is their world, uh, not not me, the teacher's world. Uh, we're still. It's still about them and not about us. Um, oh, and by the way, the whole point of trying to make this all about students is not just to say, right, you've learned what I want you to learn, go away now. Um, actually, there was, uh, you remember there were a whole lot of musicians uh, on that page. Well, 
here we are exploring again. Go and listen to some audio clips by the musicians on the page or find them on YouTube or whatever you want. Uh, which do you like best or, or don't you like them at all or, or anything? And once again, uh, like the time we said to students, um, when did women's boxing become an Olympic uh, sport? Here we are straight away saying to them, go on, uh, what's your, do you remember your response? This is your response. Maybe you didn't like any of the music of these people. There's a there's an Indian uh, um, sitar player. There's a jazz saxophonist. There's a crazy guitarist. The classical violinist. Is, is there any? Is which one do you like? Uh, it's all about you. It's not about me. I'm the teacher. You're the student. It's all about you. Here, here's another example of the same thing. And and I'm 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 uh, I, I'm particularly. Um, uh, uh, I'm particularly using this, uh, you'll see why in a minute. Um, uh, apart from human beings, uh, uh, what's the most amazing living creature that you know? This is you first. Dear students, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Uh, what's the most amazing living creature that you know? Uh, uh, human, yes, okay. Well, I'm happy with human, but that's too easy. Uh, um, something else. Uh, uh, <laughs> stop making me laugh. Um, what, yes, so, so um, ant. Yes, I think ants are quite amazing, you know. Alligators. Uh, oh, the che cheetahs are I'm just, the cheetahs are amazing. When you watch them uh, run uh, 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 over the plane, amazing. Dolphins, I, I remember, for those of you, I, there are some people here from, from, uh, from Mexico, I remember being in a boat sort of off the coast of uh, Puerto Vallarta and having dolphins, and that's in Mexico, by the way, for those of you who haven't been to Mexico, uh, and having these dolphins, the uh, school of dolphins swim along with us. And, and there's absolutely no uh, uh, question that it's one of them. They're, they're some of the most beautiful creatures on God's earth. Um, oh, the iguanas, the, the iguanas in um, uh, opposite the cathedral in Guayaquil, there's a square, a, a plaza, isn't there? And you have all these, um, uh, you have all these iguanas sort of sitting in the trees. That's quite an extraordinary experience. And so on and so forth. <laughs> Someone just said grandmas. Okay, um, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, so why I'm asking you this, you're in the room now. We've talked about these amazing uh, creatures. Of course, on Zoom, it's not very, very easy uh, to do this, but in, in classroom. Because now I want to tell you about um, that animal on the top right. Uh, it's, it's um, I, I, I think it's called Stenocara grassalipes. I think that's it. That's its uh, um, uh, uh, sort of scientific name. But it's actually uh, known in, in sort of common parlance as the uh, Namib uh, desert beetle. Uh, because uh, uh, that Namib desert beetle lives, lives in the desert in Namibia, uh, which is almost completely dry, uh, uh, absolutely dry. And uh, so there's no water anywhere, no rivers, no streams, it doesn't rain. But any living creature needs water to live. So how does this little beetle managed to stay alive. Well, what does happen in the Namib Desert, or in Chile, it's the Atacama Desert and places like that, what does happen is, is that, the, that you get sort of um, vapor blowing across the desert. Uh, 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 and that vapor has moisture in it, not like rain. Uh, it's much, much, uh, Madagascar has had a 10 year drought. Holy, uh, holy, that's, that's dreadful. Um, uh, um, it has moisture uh, um, uh, uh, blowing across it, blowing through it. And the Namib Desert Beetle is constructed so incredibly that when this moisture sort of flows across like clouds or something like that, it puts its, its little backside into the air and its wings are made of some incredible, uh, nature has given it wings with some incredible material and they pick up minute uh, uh, 
uh, they sort of pick up the moisture and turn it into minute little droplets of moisture, which then float down the wings, down to their mouth, and they've got moisture, and that's how they manage to survive. Uh, and it's absolutely awe-inspiring to me. It's absolutely awe-inspiring. I'd never heard of the Namib Desert Beetle before I started getting interested in this topic. I mentioned the Atacama Desert in Chile. That's one of the two most driest places on the earth too. And if you look at picture A, there's a student from, from uh, um, I think it's the Universidad Católica de, de, de uh, Santiago de Chile or something. I can't remember the title exact. He's doing exactly the same as the Namib Desert Beetle, but he's not doing it. It's those, you can see at the back of the picture, you can see those two, they look like sort of bed sheets or something like that. <laughs> uh, Fernando, be quiet. Uh, they're not allowed to laugh all the time. Um, uh, uh, these, they're, they're like sort of two bed sheets, but they're made of special, special material. And that special material does exactly what, uh, uh, it does exactly what uh, the beetle does. It, it, the, it, when the moisture blows through it, it collects the droplets and then they, they 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 go down to uh, down the the material and then they're collected in that thing. The the picture B that's um, in in the hills above Lima in Peru uh, because although uh, you would think Peru with, with that kind of slightly um, uh, foggy climate um, uh, doesn't actually have much rain uh, where these guys live. They used to have to have trucks drive the water to them. But if they can get these things uh, to let the Anyway, you get the point. It's called, they're called fog catchers. Pictures, pictures A, B, and C are all fog catchers. The, the, the one in, in, um, in, in, uh, in picture C is in Ethiopia. Um, and they're all designed to do what the Nami Desert uh, um, uh, um, uh, beetle does. And I think, I hope students are interested in that. I think the content is quite good. Um, but it's also a wonderful metaphor for language learning, I think, because if you can, you want students to get the language from the air around them. And I want it to run down their backs and into their mouths in the same way. That's a terrible image, but you get the idea. I want them to sort of absorb the language like these, uh, um, like, like these, uh, that beautiful little beetle does. Um, um, so when the students have read about the, the, those three projects, there's the one in the Atacama Desert, there's the one above the, uh, uh, there's the one above the, um, uh, uh, the, the hills in, in Lima, uh, uh, and there's the, uh, the, the, the tree, the, the, the imitation tree in, in, um, in um, Ethiopia. Uh, uh, and, and I've just seen, by the way, Jane Ravel is here. Jane Ravel is, is uh, uh, the main author of, of, of New American Jet Stream, the course that we're talking about. Um, uh, and the, the, uh, the memory uh, label is something that she's very, very keen on uh, and which she thinks is, is really important. Um, because if you can say to them, right, well, don't look at the book. How much can you remember about the, the Atacama Desert and the this and the that and the other? They do exactly uh, what I've been suggesting. Uh, these two stages, the processing of the information and the language that comes with it. Uh, and and um, at the same time, the conversion of some of that language and information to the memory bank. Now, if they never mention this thing again, they might remember fairly quickly, uh, they might forget fairly quickly, because we do, we forget everything. Uh, but, but as somebody said, I think it's Fernando or somebody said earlier on, uh, I can't remember. Um, but, but anyway, just getting them to try and remember what's going on, what they've just read and learnt about, is a way of the students being the prime agents in this particular uh, uh, encounter. Um, and because 
uh, the, 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 the unit that that, 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 that page about fog patching comes from is all about, um, uh, uh, drought and, and, and water and, and wet places, dry places and wet places and so on and so forth. What a perfect opportunity for, um, for, um, uh, for us to get the students, because it's all about them, to get the students, uh, you remember we talked about your story, to get the students uh, to use this new language and the new concepts they've got and the whole damn thing they're learning to use it to tell their story. Uh, and, and um, you know, think of an object or clothing that you use to keep yourself dry. Uh, um, uh, or, or, or some some other very special article of clothing for you. How often, when do you use it? When do you wear it? Why is it special? And everyone on the planet has got some article of clothing uh, uh, that, um, that, that, that they can talk about. Um, I've got a, um, for, for the rain, uh, I've got a, a red uh, kind of rainproof uh, anorak. Um, uh, uh, no, it's not anorak, it's a coat. Um, and I'm very proud of it uh, because it seems to work very well and I, it reds quite a nice colour, but especially because the money, uh, I bought it and the money goes for, to something called the RNLI. Um, uh, and the RNLI stands for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Uh, we have a fantastic, Britain is an island, as you know. We have a fantastic sort of whole red, what you call that network of, of, of lifeboats that go out and help people in trouble uh, on, on the sea. Um, uh, and they're all uh, supplied by voluntary donation. They're, they're financed by voluntary donation. Anyway, so I could talk to you about my, my raincoat um, and, uh, for hours uh, and try not to bore you. But the point is, I've got a story. Uh, we've all got stories about everything. Stories, uh, um, stories are, are what we live and die by. Um, they're what help us to explain who we are and understand who other people are. And because we're talking about um, people being dry and wet and all that kind of stuff and so on and so forth, um, uh, what's my raincoat made of? Don't be, don't ask difficult questions. I don't really know, but it's got, it's got a kind of a, 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 a very, it, it's got a, a, a layer of waterproof and then inside you, there's a sort of netting thing like that. And then if you want, you can attach uh, you can attach a kind of fleece to it and then it becomes quite warm and, and cuddly and stuff like that. Um, uh, yes, we're talking about uh, places that are very dry or very wet. Uh, uh, and, and, so, and so what do you do with that? Well, the whole point is I want this, my dear students, I want this to be your topic. I want this to be something that you uh, think about. Um, uh, and, and so uh, what do we do? Well. Uh, we can get students to uh, present, write about, do anything about facts uh, that they themselves are uh, uh, have found out, discovered, or know. Um, uh, but this is all part of the same um, uh, same collection of values and the same kind of philosophy that we were talking about before. Um, uh, so what we're trying, what, what, what we're saying here is that uh, students are going to find out about drought. Um, where does it cause severe problems? See, I just learned something uh, um, uh, which I didn't know uh, and is instantly memorable. I, I'm terribly sorry. I can't remember your name now. My, I'm having a, a brain freeze. But someone was just telling me in the chat, telling us in the chat that Madagascar's been having the most terrible drought. Um, uh, uh, and, and that's awful. And I, I mean, Madagascar, from what I understand, is a place of, of, of enormous kind of um, biological variety and, and, and so on. So, so that must be terrible. Anyway, so um, what causes a drought? Why is it? So students have to prepare a talk or, or, or write or something like that uh, uh, to, to tell us everything they've learned about um, uh, uh, droughts uh, and the problems uh, and so on and so forth. And if they can, we'd love them to present it, you know, with a, with 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 a sort of I don't know some kind of visuals or symbols or or, or something like that. Um, and 
the whole point uh, of that activity, well, no, that, that's, um, uh, um, uh, I was going to say the whole point, that's rubbish. The many points of this activity are the following. Uh, number one, it gets the students to make the topic their own. They are involved in sort of cognitive and emotional deep processing in order to do it. They work together. Uh, uh, by the time they get to make their presentation or write their thing, they will have practiced the language a few times, checked it for, <coughs> checked it for, for, um, for, um, for its accuracy and whether they've got the right kind of thing. And it has become an all round complete learning activity. Right. Well, I've got uh, uh, masses more, but I also have, have, a, have a watch. And my watch tells me that, that um, uh, this has been going on for, for about uh, um, uh, an hour or so, this talk, which is probably quite long enough to listen to one person's voice. So what I thought I'd do, and Lucy starts shouting at me if you think this is the wrong thing to do, uh, what I thought I'd do is, is um, switch off the presentation now, because uh, 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 I think I've made the points I wanted to make, uh, and then let's see if there are any questions uh, or comments that people would like to make um, and that I'm very, very happy to respond to, or indeed uh, um, other people can respond to. So if that's all right with you, uh, um, and I'm going to do it because Lucy hasn't shouted at me, um, uh, um, Jeremy, that's absolutely fine. For not, those not, not, not Lucy, sorry, Lucy, not that you would ever shout at me. You're far too polite <laughs> for that. But, so, um, so let's uh, let's see if I can unshare. Uh, uh, yeah, Just there we go. To, say, to those people that have to leave, that have teaching lessons and so on and so forth, a recording of this will be made available on our website in a couple of days, and a link will come in the email and sent to you. Jeremy, if you would like to take some questions, that's fine. They're coming through in the chat box, so I'll let you answer them as you. Yeah, let's see what's going on. Well, people are being very nice and saying thank you. What about one-to-one -one lessons? Uh, uh, Michelle asks, uh, it's a really good question because I've been talking a lot about group lessons and so on and so forth. Um, look, the, the principles are the same. Uh, and in a sense, I was going to say it's easier, but it's not, e nothing's easy. Teaching and learning are never easy. Uh, but, but in a one-to-one -one lesson, yeah, you're putting, you know, it's, it, it's not about teaching a student, it's about the student learning. And, and once you're in that mindset, uh, almost anything works. Provided you can get that one student uh, um, uh, um, uh, involved in deep processing, it's all about deep processing. That's the really, the really big, the really big deal. Um, uh, um, I've got some lovely. Thank you so much for your thank yous, everybody. I, I um, from your experience, is there a difference between deep processing? Or, uh, that's a, a, a massive who is that that's Anna Beatrice no it's Fernando is that Fernando again um I've lost I've lost who asked that it's, it's whether 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 the deep processing has any kind of cultural uh uh um um uh, kind, kind of waiting to it uh, and uh, I guess a really difficult question it actually really interests me um I I would have thought it's 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 universal but I think what people see as learning does vary tremendously from culture to culture. Um, and, and, uh, and this is mirrored, especially in methodology, uh, where, where um, uh, the sort of methodology that I take as second nature, and to some extent, what, what um, I've been talking about so much, uh, is not so appropriate in other cultures. Uh, so what a, what a teacher does, uh, and, and this is... Um, uh, and this is, uh, uh, again, reflects everything I've been saying. What a teacher does, especially as happens, uh, say, uh, if you go to teach English in another country, uh, like, like uh, a Mexican goes to teach English in China or, 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 or an Indian goes to teach English in, in, in uh, uh, Malaysia or something like that, um, uh, then the job of the teacher is, is to understand where the students are and how they learn. And that doesn't mean they have to teach exactly as those people learn, but it does mean that what you have to do is, is 
maybe the word is adapt the kind of teaching you do to suit that reality. I think that's what I'd say. Uh, yeah. Um, some lovely messages. I'm so pleased you all came along. There's Nives from Italy. Wow. Um, uh, ah, Gabriella, that's an interesting, uh, different levels of their no, no English at all. Um, look, uh, every, I've been talking in, in this kind of vacuum of students who have at least B1, uh, uh, B1, B2 level, um, because it's fun to talk about in some ways, and it's a lot easier to talk about, especially on Zoom. Um, uh, how do you do? How, how do you do what I'm talking about um, uh, at lower levels? Well, straight, just straight away. You know that very first activity I, I told to explain about deep processing um, um, uh, is applicable. Words. Which words do you? Which words do you like best? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, which you know, try, do which words are alive, and there are all sorts of things you can do to. Uh, um, uh, I think everything I've been saying, and I'm going to stop now. Um, uh, everything uh, I've been saying is is precisely. Um, it's all about the mindset of the teacher, the values, and philosophy that teachers bring to the room, uh, and and the material this this new uh, uh, american jet stream that i've been talking about um hopefully reflects those values and that mindset and that philosophy and that philosophy is quite simply um that picture of me in 1976 uh, is the wrong kind of picture i should have been in the background not in the foreground and that's what this talks about anyway i think um i think it's probably time everyone went home really um uh, because um, this has been going on for hours. Lucy. Jeremy, thank you so, so much. As you can see in the comments box, absolutely fantastic food for thought. So many people um, commenting how much they enjoyed the talk, how much um, they're going to try out some of the ideas in their own classes. As we mentioned, there'll be a link in the follow-up email for people interested in um, getting some sample materials. And thank you so much, Jeremy, for your time today. Fantastic. Really lovely. We really uh, enjoyed it. Thank, thank you, you for so organising it. Thank you for organising it, Lucy. And um, I, I, I hope to see you and as many of the teachers who came along in person. Uh, un día de estos. Definitely. Uh, we yeah. look forward to you getting back out on the road again. and having really? Yeah, I love that. Helping events. Talking of which, for anyone interested in our upcoming events, I shared the link in the chat box, but there'll also be a link in the follow up email for further um, helping events. And don't forget, you can subscribe to our newsletter as well, where you can get all of the information. The link will be in the follow up email as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for your time. It's time for us to go. But once again, thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.